so as of November 14th, I am officially a Renfrew alum. Yay! So I haven't really recorded the second half of my treatment process, mostly because school has just drained me in every single sense possible. Same with work and all of other life's festivities. So about the halfway point, my meal plan was bumped up um, pretty much by a PB&J and a glass of milk. But that increase just felt unnecessary. And that was a bit of a struggle, especially because my original meal plan just felt like it was more than enough. That in of itself was just about twice as much as I was eating on a regular basis, so just having them be like, haha, you need to actually have a little bit more now, just kind of overwhelmed me, to say the least. Um, I definitely fell into this ambivalence after week three, which also kind of led to my hiatus where I felt equally scared of trying to recover and just staying at the low that I was. And it got to the point where my second to last week, looking back, it's egregious. The email that I sent, but I sent one of the primary therapists an email pretty much saying, I can do this all on my own with my outpatient therapist. I'm good and I'm quitting. And looking back, how did I think that I would convince her in like two sentences that I was recovered? But anyways, that's besides the point. A couple hours later after chatting about my impulse decision, I sent a follow-up email be pretty much saying, Haha, JK, um, disregard the email that I just sent at midnight. When I sent the first email saying that I was quitting, I felt a pang of regret. Where I knew that I needed to recover and that my friends and loved ones would all want me to get better. There was a part of me that was so terrified of continuing treatment and so convinced that people liked me better and would like me better if I did as my disorder told me. But I don't know, it was just a really big game of tug of war where my recovery brain, as we called it in group, was at odds with my disorder. And when I first started treatment, I was just kind of in the mindset of, I don't know if I'm going to be able to continue recovery even after treatment, or if I'm just going to be like, oh, no one's going to hold me accountable anymore. I'm just going to slept back and just be in this exhausting cycle and I was like okay I'm just gonna take this day by day this decision is a decision for a future Maddie and I'm just gonna go through this treatment program right for now and make a decision as I'm gearing towards the end and I found myself to be future Maddie a little sooner than I anticipated. And I was feeling discouraged because I felt like by the time I finished program, I should have been further along than I was. Looking back, that's absurd because I've been struggling with disordered eating for 12 years now. And 
for me to expect it to go away in six weeks? That's not realistic. And I guess I knew that I wouldn't be cured in treatment and that I would still have work to do after. But I didn't have realistic expectations for myself. And I didn't have a good grasp as to how continuous recovery is. So there's that tug of war that I was mentioning earlier between choosing the safer option, which would be kind of staying where I was at. Because even if I wasn't happy where I was, I at least knew what to expect out of my life. I knew what a future with an eating disorder would look like because that's just kind of what I had been going through. And a life with recovery, on the other hand, just seemed uncertain. I was terrified that as my food tolerance increased that I would just consistently need more and more food and just pretty much be a vacuum of only being able to eat and not do anything else. Being terrified of the changes to my body, terrified of people liking me more when I was in relapse slash people liking my body more slash that's a lot of slashes um I know this is stupid but I felt like if I looked sick enough bad things wouldn't happen to me or people wouldn't be able to do bad things to me because they would be too scared to and that's still something that I'm still trying to work around I at least recognize now like my rational voice at least now is stronger than it was before so even though it's still overwhelm those thoughts are still overwhelming my counter argument voice is still louder is getting louder so even if I can't turn down the volume of my disordered thoughts, I can still fight back. I can still fight it back louder, so that's improvement and something that I wasn't really giving myself credit for because I felt like in recovery I had to lower those disordered thoughts. I also continuously thought that I had EDNOS, which is eating disorder not otherwise specified. In the DSM-5, it's the name was changed to OSFED, which I f keep forgetting what it stands for. Some other, which stands for Other Specified Feeding or Eating Disorder. The reason why I thought that was A, because that was what I was previously diagnosed with, and B, I didn't fit the physical requirements that the DSM-5 had for anorexia, and it feels so weird to say that. Like, I know that my pattern of restricting and, like, having fear foods isn't healthy. And, like, my fear of my body changing isn't healthy either. But it just never felt like it was at that point, because every time I would go to the doctor, and step on the scale, they would tell me, you're at a perfect weight. And it was just like, if I'm at the perfect weight by restricting, what's going to happen if I stop restricting? And honestly, like, I mean, I'm still not completely freed by my food rules, but I'm getting the adequate nutrition, at least. And my body hasn't changed at all. I know that a fair number of people do notice physical changes when recovering, but 
Like, I didn't look any different. And as stressful as it was to step on the scale and see the actual weight, um, like, it stayed stable the second half of treatment. Which was not what I expected, but I guess it kind of showed me that I don't have to micromanage every single calorie and that my body can do its own thing. And like during that second half of treatment, I know that I guess that was like an affirmation that one extra calorie isn't going to make a difference. Adding cinnamon to my oatmeal isn't going to make a difference. And I don't know. The last two weeks of treatment that I was in, like the, my last few weeks of treatment ish, I was so convinced that the second I left group, I would just go right back to where I was and kind of cycle in between being in treatment and being back in relapse mode for the rest of my life. And I don't know, like I guess after realizing that it was unfair for myself to not give myself a fighting chance of being happy, I just kind of decided to stick it out with recovery. I kind of thought about it back when I was in high school, applying to colleges, applied to 14, got rejected from 11 schools. Love that for me. I got accepted to a school. That's really all that mattered. I don't know if you can see this, but I'm wearing my CMU dad shirt. The ongoing joke with my friends is that I'm the dad friend and this happened. <laughs> I remember being extremely discouraged when I was sitting down in the guidance counselor's office back in high school with my parents and he circled the admission statistics and I wasn't too far off from the average, but he still thought it would be a good idea to try to bump up my scores just to secure my position, or at least increase my chances. And I remember just thinking, I'm not gonna get in, there's no point in this, I'm just wasting my parents' money by essentially paying to be rejected. And I was thinking, okay, I would have a 1 in 5 chance of getting in if I apply, but if I don't apply, I have a zero in five chance. If I didn't take that plunge, I wouldn't be where I am right now. And similarly, um, I don't know what the statistics for the chance of me living a happy life after recovery will be. No one does, but I was thinking the chance of me living a happy life and relapse is far lower than the chance of me being happy after recovery and it would be unfair for me to not increase my chance and if I'm equally afraid of the consequences of staying on the path that I was on and recovering why not choose the option that gives me a fighting chance of being happy I still struggle with the fears that I have been struggling with like, how's my body going to change? Will people like me less? Will my life get out of control? Like, there are just these thoughts plaguing my head. But I think now I've come to realize that recovering isn't about silencing those voices. I thought that I ultimately had to make them go away completely. And that's what progress meant, to silence them. But now, I feel like a more realistic kind of approach is to realize that the more I scream at them to just shut up, the louder they're gonna get. It's like that don't think about the white polar bear kind of thing where if you tell people not to think about something, they'll think about it even more intensely. And similarly, if I tell myself, don't think negative thoughts about myself, they're just gonna get louder. So I guess now I'm just trying to work on Acknowledging that I'm not completely happy with myself and 
a lot of people aren't with themselves and this is something that I'm gonna have to work on in the long run just like a lot of other people because I didn't see myself in a good light but that was how everyone else was going to see me and whenever people said nice things to me it was just because they were too nice to actually see what's on their mind but I guess I'm just trying to accept that even if I don't see myself in a very positive light I'm trying to trust that people don't see me in that same way coming out of treatment I'm not as recovered as I thought I would be but I feel like beforehand I was blindfolded and I was like fighting this dragon but I was I didn't even know where the dragon was and I was just kind of like stabbing my sword everywhere just being like okay I don't know where this is but I'm just going to poke around hoping that I might get a stab but now that dragon's still there and just as strong as it was before but my blindfold's taken off and I'm at least given some ideas as to how to conquer it. And I guess that's a, that's kind of the message that I want to send out to people, whether it be an eating disorder, other mental illnesses, whether you're going through an IOP program, through therapy or whatnot, that as cliche as it is, recovering is not linear. It's not like you wake up one day and decide, okay, I'm gonna recover and then shoom go upwards from there. And I realized that although I'm in a better headspace right now, I'm probably gonna get low again. Definitely gonna get low again. The urge to restrict again is going to come back. But instead of feeling pressured to never have that again, I feel like I'm at a place where I can focus on bouncing back up should I feel myself slipping. Thanks for following me on my rent-free journey, and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye.